The role of the individual is also important in these areas in order to see if food insecurity is a serious public health issue in food deserts and what actions are being taken on the community level. Gramsci believed that individuals could acquire knowledge if they were active and creative, which could give way to building social movements towards change. When this action or practice takes place on the community level, such as in food deserts, then practice theory will help us to observe and identify the acting units within their social structures. If we analyze low-income families within their habitus, by Bourdieu, which examines the inhabiting of a space through use of perception, thought, and action, we could then assess why these families are food insecure and what can be done to resolve the problem. When individuals are active in a community garden, for example, they have informed others of a problem in food access, involved themselves in a social movement, and have permitted active organization towards an equal access to fresh foods with the least amount of resources available. These are my proposed hypotheses. Living in an urban food desert decreases access to healthy foods and increases the cost and time and income allotted for food shopping. Therefore, low-income families will rely more on the convenience stores and fast food chains, and they're forced to choose between spending more of their limited funds on costlier, low-quality fresh foods, or just the cheaper, highly processed foods. The foods purchased will negatively affect their health and deplete their diet of proper nutrition. And low-income families assume that there is no alternative option or a way to change their food access. And lastly, my solution is through the implementing of AFNs. My method and research plan has three parts. The first is performing resource mapping in New York City of food sources available and the price and costs of foods and locating the public transportation available. The second is ethnographic interviews with food shoppers in these low-income areas or, and also the AFN employees members. And lastly is part of my field work mm -hmm. in Green Market, which is a branch of the nonprofit organization Grow NYC, and it's an outdoor farmer's market program. And my project is significant on social, political, and public health levels. And there is truly nothing beneficial coming from the existence of food deserts. If the United States is spending billions of dollars on chronic diet-related diseases, then eliminating food deserts can promote better health in these communities. Low-income families are faced with financial constraints every day, and food access should not be one of them. Food is something that we all need to survive and is the perfect vehicle for social movements to be created by both individuals and entire communities. Thanks. Any questions? I mean, hopefully, supermarkets will be added to these environments, and my solution is through alternative food networks. And in the off-season, there are farmer's markets still in New York City, but not as many. And then, of course, it's mostly, you know, root vegetables and or wintered over type things. And, of course, also, a lot of the farmers do um, greenhouse farming also, and then can provide uh, more fr fresh fruits and vegetable vegetables that way also. So, but, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, I know you're, you're focusing on New York City for obvious reasons we're here. Correct. I love the concept of food desert. That is so helpful. And I'm wondering um, whether it's a particularly urban problem? Or it's also rural, too. Like mm -hmm. A lot of the research also showed um, rural areas as just people, people that don't even have cars or access to uh, large chain supermarkets where foods are cheaper. So uh, my project, of course, yes, specifically focuses on New York City because my participation was with Green Market and in the urban environment. But they do exist in the rural areas also. So it's a big problem. 
definitely. Yes? Um, I just have a question about, um, you know, you were hearing in the news how frozen vegetables are also something that can actually be better for you than fresh vegetables because they freeze them right at their peak ripeness. Mm -hmm. So is that something, I mean, in addition to trying to get fresh markets into um, low-income areas of just trying to encourage somehow more access to frozen vegetables, is that something that's also focused on? I mean, hopefully a lot of these, there are also, of course, I didn't focus on this for my solution, but um, there's government funding and programs starting called, um, there's one called Fresh, which is like food retail expansion, sharing health foods or something like that. And um, so they're providing uh, government uh, funding and subsidiaries for some of the corner stores and convenience shops to have these kinds of fruit, fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables, sorry. Um, in their stores. So frozen is also an option, of course, but um, I don't think it's the health quality is depleted not, and it's not as um, healthy as the fresh foods. But yeah. That's really interesting. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Time for one more question. Somebody who has an extra. Okay. Do you see any um, potential for application globally for this for these ideas? I mean, is it mostly a local the alternative food network, or can you see it having uh, impact? I guess it depends on, I mean, I, the Northeast is such a great environment for farmers markets and providing, you know, local fresh foods because we have such a diverse, I feel, agriculture and um, ability to um, have those kinds of foods. So I hope so on a global level, perhaps, and, and doing world hunger and all that and food insecurity. So, but I mean, definitely government funding is also helped with these programs too. So. I hope so. <laughs>